Hi there, and this is Tuesday's edition of Hoo-Ha Sports Today. We continue with more spillover from the weekend's action from the UK and give you a brief update on the Spanish Primera Liga. But it's been 24 hours after what transpired between the Arsenal-Liverpool match on Sunday and there's still a lot of chatter going on among the fans. Now, if you saw our Fans Live episode of that Sunday's match, you would have noticed that the Arsenal fans were too distraught to give their post-match comments. No worries, guys, we understand. It's just part of the game. But the chatter has continued on the official Facebook pages. Let's look at the Liverpool Liverpool page responding to an article on Kenny Dalglish's praise of the spirit shown by his team. Borussia Coco comments, Thank you to your spirit at Emirates Stadium yesterday, while John McAvoy sums up the match in three points. Liverpool's youngins prove they can compete, Arsene is not spotting, and three, Jamie Carragher has a head of steel. He's definitely got that one right, and the Arsenal Facebook wall has some very yet colourful comments about those lost points at the Emirates, as Errol Maskell posts, goals win games, and points out the goal-scoring absentees. And from the bottom, we have Rod Gag, who says, no more excuses for the youth system and makes reference to Liverpool's youth and its reserves that snatch the points on the night. But look at who's standing up for Arsenal's policy. It's the man with the head of steel, Jamie Carragher. Carragher, who made a full recovery after being KO'd in that collision with John Flanagan, said the Reds are following Arsenal's youth policy to bring back the glory days to Anfield. In Arsenal's defence, he adds, you look at the money Manchester City have spent, and Arsenal are still the main challenges to United. Chelsea won the double last season, and again, Arsenal are the biggest challenges. He continues, the criticism Arsenal have got in the past few years for not winning anything is a bit harsh. You forget the money these other teams have spent compared to Arsenal. They are a magnificent club, the way they go about things, promoting young players, quote-unquote. You think he's okay? Did the doctor say he was okay? Which side on the fence are you on this? Arsene's ideology or Abramovich's cash for success mentality? But I must admit that some of the Reds fans believe maybe, maybe a season without European football will do Liverpool some good to concentrate on building the team and focus on the league. Maybe there is some wisdom in that. Okay, we leave that wisdom to simmer while we follow up on the bus stop after the Man United Man City FA Cup semi final. Well, the FA has gone into extra time before they will pass a verdict on this. The FA has reviewed the incident plus Mike Dean's match report and is not expected to take disciplinary action against either the clubs or players. Although its disciplinary department has requested more broadcast footage and it will assess this before making a final decision. However, it has been confirmed that Paul Scholes is to miss United's next three matches as a result of his dismissal at Wembley. So he's out for tonight's Newcastle game and the ones between Everton and Arsenal. It was also reported that United's dressing room in Wembley was damaged after the match. According to the Daily Mail, United's fitness coach, Tony Sturtwick, caused damage to the plasterwork in the wall when he kicked it out of anger after their defeat. Maintenance staff were called in overnight before the Stoke Bolton semi-final. You sure it was Sturtwick? I heard Alex Ferguson was famous for damage like that, or throwing a hairdryer or kicking a boot in someone's face. It's absolute nonsense. The, L- the FA also confirmed that they will not take any action on Kenny Daglish and Arsene Wenger as they viewed the exchange of words as being caught off camera and not directed at camera, like in Wayne Rooney's case. And speaking of whom, Rooney is back for tonight's away match with Newcastle and looks like he will sit behind Chicharito in a 4-4-1-1 formation. And yes, Ferguson has included Michael Carrick in the starting eleven. Just briefly to the Spanish Primera Liga, the first four matchups between Real Madrid and Barcelona was at the weekend in the league and tomorrow night it will be the second in the Copa del Rey. But in the league, Real's brave performance with 10 men did little to help reduce that 8-point deficit to Barca. Valencia, who picked up at 3 points away at Almeria and Villarreal, who beat Real Zaragoza this morning, looked set to finish in 3rd and 4th respectively. But it's the race for that Europa League spot between Atletico Bilbao, Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, Espanyol and now they are joined by Levante with just 6 matches left in the season. Alright, that will be it for today. More to come tomorrow with the results from that Newcastle Man United match and a look ahead to the Spurs Arsenal derby and the MSL. With Perak having been beaten on the weekend by leaders Selangor, will things change at the top after tonight's fixtures? Details in tomorrow's edition. Till then, from the team, I'm Patrick saying it's bye for now.